Now, typically, I don't really make Path of Buildings that use multiple hundreds of divines, things like Mageblood, things like Nemus, and all that kind of good stuff. I tend to stay away from those and make my builds more approachable for a wider audience. That being said, this league is a little bit different. Currency just seems to be, you know, falling from the sky at any given time, and I have had enough people ask me for a Mageblood POV, the Kinetic Bolt Deadeye, that I decided I'd go ahead with it. And as you can see from the footage in the background, it turns out Mage Blood is a pretty strong item, and when you use high-end super powerful gear, you can make high-end super powerful characters. Now, according to Path of Building, the build's doing well over a billion DPS, but I don't even know if I have enough time on most bosses to be able to ramp up to that amount of damage because they just kind of fall over instantly most of the time when I can get my damage out properly. However, more damage is typically better Better when it comes to ubers because the best way to be able to kill an uber boss most of the time is to simply do so much damage that it just falls over instantly. That being said, this build isn't a slouch in maps either. In the mapping setup, you do have some pretty good and significant defenses. The only time it really dies is if you run a very insanely dangerous map with like delirium and like 6,000 plus wisps as well as a whole bunch of other stuff or you find one of those really insanely annoying mobs that like have a, you know, proximity shield and teleport all over the place. Besides that, the build is mostly safe. In this video, we're going to talk about the differences between the normal setup in my previous video and this new Mageblood setup, as well as transitioning from the mapping into the bossing POB and vice versa. Now, if you're new to the channel, make sure that you subscribe. And without further ado, let's get into it. Now, I want to show you guys the build in a map. I would like to be able to show you that. And this is the sixth map in a row that I have tried, and these are not cheap maps that I am attempting to run. But as you can see by my latency bar up here at the top, the GGG servers, the Path of Exile servers are an absolute nightmare today. I've been having problems all day during my stream, and there's not really anything that I can do. Basically, every single map that I've run into, I've had weird latency lag problems. Um, I'm on predictive, so I've done basically everything I can. But people have been like having issues with the build in like super duper juice maps. And um, this is the Mage Blood version. So I'm going to show you this version in a tier 16 Drox Dunes 80% Delirious um, Enfeeble. Two unique bosses. Buffs expire faster. Flash charge is reduced. I just rolled it randomly. This ended up being a pretty okay map. It's not like super insanely dangerous. We are going to run Ambush. I've got a bunch of Sextants on here. And yeah, so these are just the Scarabs that I have left in my inventory at this point. So let's see how much Wisp Dust we can get and see how things go. And hopefully this map isn't super laggy. Unfortunately, we did not get lucky. And as you can see, the latency is already starting. We're already having issues. Uh, we'll get as much dust as we can in here and we'll see what happens. I'll see you guys in a moment. All right, so I managed to get around, I think this is seven and a half thousand dust. And we're going to go jump into the map and oh, it's already looking good. So I know a lot of people have kind of been struggling with mapping and such, but um, the build can map. I was able to do maps like this previously, even in the uh, non Mage Blood version of the POB. But if you are struggling and you have some currency to spend, Mage Blood very obviously is an insanely good item. Nemus is also an insanely good item for this build and it does help with clear quite a bit. So you are able to use both of these to very good use on this build. And I kinda, despite the horrible, horrific latency that I've been having, I wanted to at least show, you know, the mapping capabilities of the build. That was a big explosion. I wanted to at least be able to show the mapping capabilities of the build because it is quite proficient in these kinds of maps. Uh, even with giant, crazy, unbelievable lag spikes happening constantly. So one big thing that I know people have been having issues with, at least from the seemingly hundreds of POBs that I've looked for of trying to help people with their builds and fix problems that people have been having, is that people seem to be undervaluing how strong um, evasion is and how strong getting evade capped is. I'm going to hold on for a second because this is a triple empowered Kosas. All right, we got him. What dropped? Oh, a raw divine orb and a fortunate. So people have massively underestimated how powerful getting evade capped is. And I do want to take a moment to kind of talk about that while I am doing whatever it is you're seeing on screen. 
Um, the big thing about evade cap compared to not being evade capped is that evasion is an entropic system. And what that means is that it is not RNG. You will eventually get hit. That is just the way that evasion works, right? So after a certain amount of time, after doing a certain, you know, after getting hit a certain amount of times, you will get hit. There is no escaping that. So what that means is that when you have, say, I don't know, 90% evasion, right? 90% evasion means that you have a 90% chance to evade, right? That means that every 10th attack is guaranteed to hit you no matter what, right? It is going to hit you. And my, my everything is so messed up right now. So if you think of it that way, that means that if you are running a, say, 95% evasion build, that means that every 20th attack is going to hit you. Meaning that just simply getting 5% more evasion doubles its effectiveness. This is super, extremely important. And so many people tend to just completely glaze over that fact and don't even think about it. You really genuinely cannot be ignoring things like this. It's super important for essentially any build that is running evasion, that if you want to be able to, no, this mob is so insanely strong. It's in a drock circle as well. I'm barely gonna be able to kill this. If you want to be able to run a build that can do these kinds of just absolutely insanely juiced maps, every part of the defensive layers matter, okay? Every single one of them. You can't just not do one of the defensive layers. The difference between 90% evasion and 95% evasion is massive. You have to have it. The difference between getting hit once every 10 attacks and once every 20 attacks is the difference between dying and not. So I just I kind of wanted to make that point that you can't just give up on certain things and not go for certain things. Can I pick up this divine word? You have to really follow the POB and take all of the nodes. You can't just choose which ones that you would like and choose which pieces of gear that you would like. You really do need to follow it. And I have learned this league more than pretty much anyone previously that uh, people tend to think that they can just do whatever they want with the POB and not worry too much about it. And that is genuinely not the case. So finally, I've had one map that didn't go horrifically wrong with the latency. Like the, the lag is bad this map, but it is at least somewhat behaving. So that's good. It only took me six tries and probably like five divine worth of currency to be able to get this one to happen. But I did want to at least be able to show you guys this uh, super crazy juice map. Um, at this point, I've probably cleared enough and babbled enough about random stuff. Um, I don't want to take that one. I want to take that one. I don't want less recovery rate. That's actually pretty rough for the build. Um, I've probably babbled enough about the build at this point. Um, we'll go jump to Drox and we'll take a look at how that goes. All right, so that was double, triple empowered uh, normal map bosses. Let's see how Drox goes. Oh, he's got a Harbinger with him as well. Now, I don't exactly know how much Drox is gonna be powered up. Okay, he's triple empowered. That'll probably kill me, I have to imagine. I don't think I'm hitting him. Right now I'm hitting him. Okay, he's going into his phase. And this is on the mapping setup, so the mapping DPS is significantly lower than normal. Um, and I also think it's a little bit hard to properly line this up when I'm lagging. Um, and I'm vulnerable again. But yeah, so... Triple empowered... Uh, what is this? Seven and a half thousand wisps. But yeah, so you can kind of see. Um, absolutely ridiculous map that we just did there and little to no issues the whole way through even with seven and a half thousand juice um the map mods on here honestly aren't that insane it's like enfeeble and chain additional times two bosses um it rolled relatively well like the mods aren't super crazy dangerous so that is a big portion of it however still any map that's going to have a seven thousand plus 
of the uh, 7,000 plus dust among everything else, it's still going to be a really super dangerous map. It just so happens the one that went well and I didn't lag out and crash constantly ended up not being one of the more dangerous ones. But in a like ridiculously crazy dangerous map with lots of bad mods and such, you'll probably die once or twice to a really super dangerous mob. But most of the time, you should probably be rolling over those insanely dangerous maps anyways. But um, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the build now that we are done with this map. I mean, you got to open up a void reliquary key. If you're if you're recording and you drop one in the middle of the recording, you got to open it up during the recording, right? I mean, there's no reason not to. But then, of course, you get something like this. <laughs> what is this? Vivinsect, I think is what it's called. All right. So now that I have shown you what the build is capable of in a map, you saw some clips earlier of what it can do to uber bosses. Let's talk a little bit about the differences between this version of the build and the one that I put in the video a week or so ago, a week or two ago now at this point. Realistically, all that has changed is that I have equipped Mageblood. I have equipped Nemus. I've changed around the main link gems. Um, we have put on Replica Harry's Ire. Mainly, this is because we now are able to cover our resistances with, you know, like Cheater Belt. Uh, Equip Funny Belt have infinite resistances. I mean, like, my elemental resistances on my character are well over 100. On some of them, I'm at 178 cold resist right now. Essentially, what this allows us to do is just equip any amount of really super powerful uniques that we want. One big thing about Nemus is that it does require permanent phasing for this ring to work properly. Now, if you're used to how this build functions when it doesn't have Nemus, you shoot out a bunch of projectiles. I have greater volley support in. You shoot out a bunch of projectiles, right? And then if you have returning projectile support, which I'll go ahead and grab so I can show it to you. It should be in here somewhere. That's a really low level one. So if we have returning projectile support without Nemus on, we shoot these projectiles and then they come back, but they all go out in front of us. So if we're standing in front of a boss, we're going to hit them with every single one of these. They will shotgun, they will split out, and then they will return and hit the target. However, this happens in front of us. It doesn't happen inside of us. So what this means is that it's relatively easy to overlap all of these on a single target and do a whole bunch of damage. Now, previously in the previous version of the build, you might remember me using point blank alongside far shot. In the Nemus version of the build, point blank is absolutely not worth. So the whole idea is that when we are using Nemus, these projectiles fire in random directions all around us. That means the vast majority of them are not hitting the boss on the first attack. So what this means is that these projectiles go out, like they leave from our character, and then they come back. And when those projectiles come back, they are going to be hitting the boss and then splitting from there and then returning afterwards. What this means is that without a doubt, they have traveled the full distance for the full damage on Farshot. Essentially what ends up happening is that since we are using Nemus and we do have Mage Blood and we're able to have permanent phasing, if you watch the projectiles when they go out, they all go out, but then they cross back right directly on top of my character. This is what allows you to get those big giant overlaps. You need to be inside of the enemy. Beyond that, as I said before, um, Replica Yuri's Ire, I used this in a previous version of the build. I just genuinely didn't think it was as good as a chess piece like this one, mainly because we really needed resistances previously. We really needed, you know, like some extra effect of our auras and maybe some resists or something else, right? These were all necessary stats. Now that we just have funny belt equipped and we have a bunch of flasks that do all kinds of crazy things, yeah, you can use the big, super crazy, you know, infinite amount of damage uh, chest piece. All of this allows us to drop returning projectiles in our main link, use a bunch of other like insanely powerful gems and such. And beyond that, nothing realistically has changed. I have crafted a different ring here. There's notes on how to craft this in the POV. It's not as hard as it seems. I know this ring looks insane, but it's genuinely not that hard. And then one final kind of big change is going to be that we are using Spell Slinger now. There's one really big upside to this and one really big downside to this. Technically, there's two upsides. One of the upsides is the fact that Spell Slinger will allow us to apply our mark, which is the main reason that we're using this link, to anything, including random blue and white mobs. If you have played this build and you've been doing some random mapping, you might have noticed that occasionally you'll run into like a super powerful blue mob and it's essentially just impossible to kill. This fixes that because it makes it so that you're going to be able to auto mark those targets. The second upside here is that we are casting this mark and this mark is going to cost us, if I can find it, 31 mana 
every 0.6 seconds, which means that with Sigil of Power, we are spending a ton more mana and we can get to stage four on this extremely quickly. So that means while we are mapping, we are significantly safer against enemies that are within the circle because it's gonna be stage four and we're gonna do a ton more damage. Here's the downside. The mark is a spell and we are going to be casting it every, what is it, 0.6 seconds, right? Spell Slinger has a 0.6 second cooldown time. What ends up happening is that every single time you cast a spell, you sacrifice 10% of your life. So even if we're triggering it, even if we're using it, doesn't matter what it is, we are losing 10% of our life. We are sacrificing it every single time that we cast a spell. Now in the map, you saw that this wasn't really a big deal. Most of the time I was perfectly fine. When we're bossing, we're not gonna be using the, uh, we're not gonna be using the Spell Slinger here. We're gonna turn off Spell Slinger. We're actually gonna be activating Aspect of the Crab. Aspect of the Crab is gonna give us a bunch of extra max fizz, which will help with some bosses attacks and means that we won't really have to worry too much about the whole Spell Slinger thing. You will simply just cast your mark manually. You'll take spell slinger out you'll just manually cast your mark on the boss it's permanent except on uh, enemies like shaper who goes completely invulnerable occasionally but it's permanent otherwise you cast the mark on them once and then you just go to town hitting them as many times as you possibly can that is pretty much everything that's changed realistically about the gear there's not really much else of course since we're using mage blood we're using different flasks now this will all be detailed like which ones you should be using in the pob um, we are going to be using a Dying Sun in the bossing setup. One big notable change about this Dying Sun is you might notice the 70% increased effect. One big thing about Mage Blood is that with this tincture, if you remember in the earlier versions of the POB, I had this node here, this one here that gives you 30% increased effect when used if you've hit an enemy with a weapon recently. This does not work on Mage Blood flasks. So any flask that's next to this does not get the additional 30%. However, this dying sun, when you put it next to it, does get the effect. So 100% increased effect on this dying sun, even if you don't have 70%, we still have um, one of these 5% effect nodes. So as long as this is 65%, you're still good. This is giving us four additional projectiles. That's one of the main ways that we're getting this like super huge amount of damage on single target when it comes to bosses. But that is pretty much it for the gear. Talking about the tree, the tree is relatively the same. Uh, I have cut off this section of the tree now with Mage Blood because realistically, we don't need another wand mastery anymore. When you're clearing, you're just going to use increases and reductions of spell damage also apply to attacks while wielding a wand. In the clearing setup, we're using greater volley support for four additional projectiles. This means we have plenty of projectiles, so you can drop that additional projectile node. When you swap over to the bossing setup, you'll just take the additional projectile node because you're not really going to be using kinetic blast anymore. And with that said, these points over here were simply not worth it over taking a bunch of points on this side. In the mapping setup as well, we are going to be using a large thread of hope, get as low of a elemental resistance, of course, as you can, because this does allow us to get a couple of really powerful nodes and save some points. We can get this piercing shots node, we can get multi-shot, we can take one with nature as well as quick step. You can notably take this as well if you are a little bit more leveled up than I am. I'm only 96 at the moment, but there are a ton of nodes that you can get with this. It's a very, very powerful thread of hope, but it's only really strong for the mapping version of the build. For the bossing version, this doesn't do as much for us. And to show you that, let's jump over into Path of Building. So two things, as always, there is going to be a thread in my Discord. That thread has been around for a very long time now, and I have probably spent 10 to 20 hours answering questions in there. If you have questions about the build, use the search function in the thread on my Discord. It is linked down in the description. I've probably answered the question that you have at this point. Now, there will be new questions about the Mage Blood setup. I'll do my best to answer those whenever I do have time. However, I am going to be leaving on a trip for a week and I'll have no computer for a week. And that's happening tomorrow. I'll do my best. But there's going to be two POBs. These are going to be linked down in the description. We've got the bossing POB and the mapping POB. So talking about the mapping POB a little bit, I want to go over some like bullet points on things that you really need to make sure that you're being aware of on your own character going forward for this like POB and for this setup. You need to make sure that you are at 95% evasion. I spoke about this earlier during the map. It is extremely imperative that you have 95% evasion at all times. It can't just be some of the time. It needs to be all of the time. Make sure that you get that. The ways that you get that are through evasion on gear, evasion on flasks. You can get um, the watcher's eye that gives you additional evasion. You can run dread banner. There are a bunch of ways that you can get evasion. Make sure it's 95 if you want to stay alive in maps. Next thing, you cannot skimp on life. This is not a build where you are allowed to skimp on life. 
any piece of gear that you can have life on, you need to have as much life on it as possible. Realistically, the only piece of gear on this build that actually has life right now is this ring. Make sure you get life on the ring. And make sure, also with your tree, that you take every single life node that is available to you. Every single one. It doesn't matter if it's only this little itty bitty 4% life node, you take it. We do so much damage, it doesn't matter. You need to be able to survive. Next thing is going to be leeching and life gain on hit. You have to take these nodes. You have to take this leech instant mastery. If you can't get this ring that has 16 life gain per enemy hit with attacks, you have to drop some damage for these nodes or you will not stay alive. Especially when you get into those maps where it's like 96% reduced like life recovery. If you do not have these nodes, you will die. If you do not have the or the ring, you will die. You need to take these nodes. They're non-negotiable. So don't think that you can, uh, you know, skimp on a little bit of recovery. It's in there for a reason. Next thing is going to be spell suppression. You have to be at 100%. No ifs, ands, or buts. You have to be at 100% suppression. Resistances, fire, cold, lightning, and chaos for mapping, 100%. You have to be at 75%. There's, there's no getting over that. It has to be 75. And if you don't plan on using a flask that has reduced effect of curses, you need to be over capped on those resistances so that you can handle things like um, elemental weakness or conductivity or things like that. Now, as I said in the notes, there is going to be a section on crafting the ring. It's relatively straightforward. I've put all the information in here. All of the previous information is pretty much exactly the same. Um, I've updated some things for different pieces of gear. Not really much else to speak about here. Um, let's take a look at the bossing POB because this is going to be a decent amount different to the one that you just saw. This is probably 10 to 15 respect points that you're going to have to do, but if you have a mage blood equipped onto your character, I, I don't want to hear you complain about not having enough currency to respect your build by 15, 20 points whenever you're trying to swap between. Technically, you don't need to swap over to the bossing version of the POB if you don't want to to do ubers and such 400 million DPS or even more than that if you take out like the uh, the like multiple projectile gem is plenty of damage to be able to kill whatever it is you need to kill. However, one big thing that is pretty important is you do want a that which was taken with 25% mark effect on it if you're going to be bossing. This is a large portion of your damage. Other than that, the gear is mostly exactly the same besides that dying sun that I talked about that you swap out for the chaos res. The tree is relatively different. We are only going for 90% evade here because realistically it just isn't feasible to be able to get 95 and the only boss that 95% evasion would help with is going to be eater of worlds and even with 95% evasion you really shouldn't be face tanking him anyways he just has too many tentacles that hit you too many times and it's going to be procking your wind dancer if you want to turn off wind dancer and get 95% evasion eater of worlds will probably be a bit easier however my suggestion is just get a little bit better at dodging his attacks probably going to do a lot better for you than trying to change your build around a bunch other than that we do have a different anoint so keep that in mind we're using prism weave with this setup instead of sovereignty which we needed in the other one we are taking some different points that you will have to swap around you don't need that other wand master anymore so you'll swap to an additional projectile we're taking like these nodes we're taking these nodes as well as the nearby enemies are in intimidated and we're taking a few different nodes down here both of these path of buildings have 96 and 100 trees because i know some people can't be bothered to get to 100 other than that the skills are slightly different remember that you do have aspect of the crab while bossing and we're going to be using volatility awaken lightning pin and elemental damage with attacks you'll need different colors in your gloves if you've already bought like 150 divine mage blood just buy another set of gloves it'll be a couple more divine you should be okay and with sniper's mark if you want to, I'm not going to put this in the POB, but if you're listening, you can get a separate replica Heary's Ire with a four link and a two link and insert enhance in here like this. This is something that you can do. It is like 5% overall damage, but realistically, you don't have to do this if you don't want to. You can just unsocket the spell slinger and just hard cast the sniper's mark without the enhance and it will be more than fine. And that, at long last, is going to be it. If I've missed anything in this video or you have any further questions, make sure to go down in the Discord, go to the dedicated channel and ask in there. As I said, I've probably already answered your question at this point. Just use the search function and you'll probably find it. If not, you can at me in that channel. I do my best to answer questions, but once again, starting tomorrow, I'm gonna be gone for a week and not really have much access to a computer. So I appreciate you boys. Hope you enjoy the updated version of the build. If you've got a bunch of money and you wanna throw it at a 
pretty solid all-rounder. This build has been one of the better ones that I've played in quite some time. And remember, boys, if you enjoy this content, make sure to give this video a like, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit that notification bell to stay up to date with all the latest videos, and stay safe out there in Ray class. And I'll see you guys in the next video.